Hello everyone and welcome to this new media. It's a media where I'm solely with a cell phone and speaking in it, very disturbing and very different from what I do usually. We'll see how my brain does on such a media uh, because I'm kind of a artificial young man and man usually when you see me in JFG tonight, I have, a, I have three monitors. Some of them monitor my social media. Some of them monitor responses to the live. Some of them monitor the regular chat, the super chats. Some of them are reminding me of all the news items to talk about. So Twitter space is a very different media. And uh, I didn't choose that. I would explain a little bit. I would explain what I can explain of why I'm doing only Twitter spaces. But I think it's also an opportunity to try something new and something more family oriented in terms of having you guys join at time as speakers. Uh, unlike the regular show, we can now have people just joining as speaker. For example, I just assigned speaker to Shim. Let's see if, uh, if Shim has something to say. Hello, JF. This is Steven Robinson. This is one of my many alt accounts. Oh, thank you for calling. It's uh, it's very different from reading your your regular chats, but in the end, it's the same thing. It's human beings uh, realizing what each other are thinking and exchanging. It's wonderful. Well, we're happy to have you. Uh, it's uh, your vacation was unexpected. Yes, I would explain more about this, but thanks for being here. And to anyone during the show, don't don't hesitate to raise your hand or I don't know how you guys request this, but I see requests popping in to uh, assign you speaker. I think it will be a very different show with hearing everyone and what they have to say about the news. Okay, so let's start on Code Orange Vacation. Um, I'm declaring Code Orange Vacation and this is some order to my staff and the people who care for the Discord server, the Telegram, uh, other entities that I control to just take care of it. And just keep taking good care of it while I can. <laughs> And <laughs> it's very rare that you will have heard me cry, but it is out of attachment to this community and what I've built across the years. And don't worry about my situation. I'm crying, but not out of despair here, but out of love for what we've built, which has res resisted many attempts, many attacks. <laughs> many hits by censorship across the years and i don't want to impose you guys uh, one hour of crying so let me try to take back my emotions here and that's all i meant by code orange is that i'll count i'll count on you guys to take care of all of this for an unknown period I cannot know exactly when I'll be back to my computer. <laughs> what I've been seeing, uh, what I've been responding to is simply threats against me and my family, which has forced me into radical actions just to cover myself and to be clear, I'm not uh, running away from the police or the government. I'm still using my phone and they have my phone number. They can contact me at any time. The police knows that I always respond to my phone. But there are private threats and I've been feeling them coming for weeks. There are individuals that are that are getting excited at the election and for some reason they, they target right-wing people and it's extremely demanding to protect against these threats and extremely demanding to to deal with explaining to people 
who are under threat, getting them to act in their best interest. The good news is nothing has happened to me and nothing has happened to my family. So I had to deploy enormous amounts of work for this to happen and for us to be in protected places where very few know where I am. That is it. I cannot tell you the nature of the threat, and I cannot give you more information, nor where I am. But life is great, and everyone is safe. So it is extremely good that what I've enacted is a plan that has been drawn for many years, and that has just worked. It's impressive how much it worked. but. I've seen so many of our friends recently targeted, and it's always falling onto the right way. It's always falling onto those people who, who think you're right wing. Like people like Sticks, I don't even, I can't even tell that he's right wing, but yet he's considered right wing. And you see a bunch of threats showing up in his life a girlfriend, a girlfriend shows up, starts making allegations. It always comes from within the family. There's always a bunch of agents who are not who they say they are in your life. And they start, they start trying to make trouble and they start putting you under physical threat. And the only way to avoid this sometimes is self-defense. But I hate self-defense, you see, because Self-defense gets you in jail. So my favorite response to threats is escape. But escape forces you sometimes to, to deprive yourself of certain liberties at the, at the cost for, for, for resisting to minimal threats, for resisting to minimal possible attacks. You have to deploy enormous amounts of energy which may be why I'm crying today, because I, I, I just got tired. I got tired of just, it, it can take two days just to, to get to a safe place. I have a Nat here who wants to come as a speaker. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Nat. I can speak. I don't know if anyone can hear me, but it seems yes, like I can speak. Can. I did it. Great. I have a question. You. Okay. Thank you. Can you tell us anything about uh, why you believe these threats are credible? I can't, but I can tell you that it's physical and seen. It's not uh, any sort of, uh, I'm not a paranoid individual. I, I just can tell you that there are people who are hating uh, and they are they are kind of uh, inflamed by the election and they use all of the tricks they can to put sticks into our bicycles. That is all I can say, unfortunately. And the thing is that the problem being, uh, the more you reveal about your strategies, the more they are inefficient. So I'd rather stay silent on all this. And I'm sorry because I love transparency. And maybe in one year from in one year from now I can tell you more. But right now I can't. All right, Nat, thank you for joining as a speaker. As I have uh, as I have indicated everyone can speak tonight. Uh, you just have to raise your hand and do a request. So yeah, uh, it, it's very hard to be detached from this computer because it, it is really my life. And what we've built across the years is years of uh, a community that has concentrated around extremely intelligent people. And uh, it, it's very sad to see my connection to it be disabled in part because all I can have right now is my phone. Uh, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge the beauty of the current situation, which is that the flame of liberty still shines, even if extremely damp, even if very small, 
uh, it keeps uh, lighting up the dark room that we are in. Uh, so what I've seen in the last few weeks are compatible with attacks on the right that, the, that I didn't even know the left would deploy, like the kind of thing like sticks being arrested, that kind of stuff. I thought it was done because I thought the left was getting less emotional. But the reality is they are just as much, uh, e they, they are just as evil as they used to be. And the, we, f we may feel that the 2024 election is not super exciting, but they are just exactly where they were in 2016 and they haven't evolved since then. So anyways, before I, before I declared this code orange vacation, I was about to do a show. I was about, to, I had actually prepared a show where I wanted to, I wanted to um, talk about Fauzi. And Fauzi has had some extremely disruptive behavior on the internet. And I have analyzed years of his behavior to conclude that this guy has schizoaffective disorder. And I wanted to talk about this because this is one of the biggest disorder you can possibly have. Um, Schizoaffective disorder is a mix of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. You literally have the two. And you have the psychosis and delusions of schizophrenia. And then you have the ups and downs of mood, which are extreme, of uh, bipolar disorder. So schizoaffective disorder I believe is exactly what Fauci has. And I will lay out my reasoning on this. Fauci has been accused by Kim Starr for many years now of being an unstable individual who goes through cycles. So the first thing to see is that he's been through many cycles. Uh, one year ago, there was uh, scandals around this guy because he streamed a stream of himself. He is a Palestinian. They, they say he is a Palestinian, okay? Uh, at this point, I, I'm wondering how many of these who say they are Palestinians are actually Jewish, and there is some degree of genetic connection between the two, so I, I don't know to which extent. But anyways, he's, he's involved with the Kim Star business, and he does a stream with a girl at an airport, and he starts attracting he starts talking about this girl as a victim of human traffic. Now, that was uh, one year ago, and not only does he say she was a victim of human traffic, but it, it appears during the stream that he goes to have sex with her and then pays her. <laughs> so that was one of the biggest scandals involving Fauci one year ago, or a little more than a year ago. Uh, people were saying, hey, you just you just engaged as a prostitute, a victim of human trafficking. That's one thing we often see in those consumers of prostitution. They love to have it for the prostitute as a victim. That is a, a fascinating aspect. Uh, they, they, will, they will consume the prostitute. They will pay. They will be part of the problem of the prostitute. If you want to see prostitute as an act of victimization, uh, you shouldn't be consuming the prostitute, and yet they are. So they are uh, in a more that the idea of basically taking in a woman as a victim. And this is what Fauci was doing on the stream as he was describing, oh, look, she's been a victim of human traffic and she needs money. She needs money. She needs help. Here, I'm going to give you 2000 on your Venmo. Those are the behaviors of a consumer of prostitution. And this has exposed on to stream what I knew about prostitution, which is it's not just, hey, let's transact money for sex. <laughs> it, is, it is like, let's transact a bunch of fucked up emotions and uh, contrary emotions for... Um, for money uh, and part of it exclude uh, includes extortion and part of it includes oh i need money for my half black child because he needs some dentistry work being done 
So Falsi had been having this very contradictory behavior and he had told Keemstar, yes, I fucked this prostitute in the bathroom. Keemstar had come publicly and said, look, it looks like Falsi has both claimed that this woman is a victim of human trafficking and also <laughs> consumed her as a prostitute. Falsi had had an epic reaction on a Twitter space to this claim. He was yelling at Keemstar. He was like, why have you said this about me? And all facts indicate that this was true. The stream leaves no doubt that they, they were cuddling, they were touching each other. He was then going to the bathroom and coming back. It's if whether he had sex, the extent of the sex they had in the bathroom may be in question, but the idea that he paid is unquestioned, and the idea that he had sex with her is unquestioned. And Farsi was basically offended by Kim Star just reporting the truth about this. And Kim Star had even had a, a private admission by Farsi that he had had sex with this prostitute. But a schizoaffective disorder person draws a network of understanding of their social surrounding. And it's like, you betrayed me. Uh, th they're always... Uh, they're always feeling the betrayal, no matter if it's with the truth, against the truth, no matter if they are the one lying. If someone comes, whether it's with the truth or false, if they come against you in some form, they are an enemy. And schizoaffective disorder people have a big line dividing enemies and friends. And typically 99% of the world will end up in enemies. and um two or three people will be within friends and they won't last long there 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 will be some even that they interpret as betrayal so the difference between schizoaffective disorder and schizophrenia is that schizophrenia leads you to totally totally psychotic beside the point delusions they are untied with reality and as such they are more easily abstracted uh, schizoaffective disorder will put these delusions into the social space of the existing world around you. Consider how hard it is, for example, to say, I imagine a pink elephant in front of me. That delusion, even if it was to happen to my brain, there would be things that are so unreal about it that it would be easily undermined and under some medication, I may even stop to see it or not care about it. That's basically schizophrenia. But if the delusion was, hey, this guy betrayed you, Keemstar betrayed you, now you start having a world of social constructs. And the schizoaffective person is a specialist at building social constructs of betrayal. Fauci has repeatedly, like, I think I have 20 examples of him yelling at his staff and considering that his staff has betrayed him for some reason. If you find yourself yelling at 20 different people that they betrayed you, you probably have schizoaffective disorder. So recently what happened is that Farsi started doing a series of worrying streams where he was wearing a black cap on his head and he, he started saying, this may be my last stream, this may be my last stream. Uh, they're going to come and get me. And it looked like he was going to be forced into psychiatry as he was in the past, which is why I say forced psychiatry. And the psychiatric state, as we have built it, is absolutely to be rejected. Um, it's not good. It's not good for the world. It's not good for Fauci. And they fail at helping because there's no fix to schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. You're just going to let them in nature. Once they're neutralized with medication, you let them in nature, they will immediately stop the medication and they will go back into their cycle of destruction. So Fauci made a series of stream in which he was suggesting that he was going to be arrested, that they were coming. And the thing is, he's right in this society. You know, they are coming for you. If you, if you start uh, drifting 
a little bit. The psychiatric state will come for you. And uh, the problem with this is once you enter the psychiatric ward, you have no right. The psychiatrist can decide that you're a danger forever. Even if you show uh, goodwill, even if you say, no, I'm not a danger. If, if he's convinced that you are a danger, he will convince a judge to keep you in forever. So the lack of a temporal end to this violation of rights is just one of the problems. But even the temporary aspect of it is also a problem. Uh, to, to have these guys always on the wild, in the wild, in the jungle of reality, and not knowing if their next day is going to be forced into psychiatry is really not pleasant. So I, I would advocate for a more open society, which is what I was promised. I was promised we were in a liberal society. Uh, I feel like the Joker and Joker won, where I've been promised a liberal society, but yet I have to excuse myself because I don't laugh at the right time. And Farsi has, has to excuse himself because he doesn't, uh, he doesn't do streams like the, the ones people would want. Fauci was very emotional. And in the end, I, I don't think he was in prison for a long time because I see him tweet now. So whatever was the problem, if he got into psychiatry at all, it seems to have been solved. But as a result of this, Kim Star came out and all people who know uh, him came out and described this behavior. And we had the, an insight into the cycle, which is that Farsi constantly deals with a uh, professional cameraman very harshly, becomes angry at them, you betrayed me, starts yelling. He feels also betrayed by, by the community and he entertains massive fear by the people like Kim Keemstar because he considers that people like Keemstar can abolish him basically abolish his reputation by saying things like they have said in the past which is the prostitute example so all in all i was pretty entertained by the false streams and uh, i think there was uh, much exaggeration in this case that he didn't get into psychiatry or if he got it was a restricted moment and he seems now that he's tweeting normally so it seems that it wasn't his last stream and that he's now around. I'm glad about this. Now, there are other news I wanted to talk about. With this media, though, I have to click on my phone to get to the news. Um, <clears throat> Cheezer reveals that Adam Ross forced him into a contract, taking 20% of all of his earnings. That thing is killing the streaming business. These streamers are fake streamers. They, are, they have inflated uh, popularities. They have bots on their streams, and they, they're not even the owner of their streaming platform. And this is so different from what we had in the old school, because in the old school, you were building a YouTube channel. Of course, it was on YouTube but it was your YouTube channel and it was your following. And even if you were to lose, uh, even if you were to lose contact with YouTube, if they were to censor you, you still retain the ownership of your community. And that was good. But the streamers we see on these sites of stake and they're all together and they're all promoting each other, they own each other. And this reminds me of the classic music industry, you know, directed by Jews, where you have an agent where he's getting a cut on everything. And he's the one unlocking the doors for you. They are trying to do the same thing with streaming. And I personally to totally reject this. Um, Radar Hits has reported what to me is the most important news in the last 24 hours breaking iran earthquake overnight speculated to be caused by a nuclear test the caviar desert rarely has earthquakes so we have detected um a event of earthquake in iran um of magnitude 4.6 magnitude 4.6 earthquakes is totally what i would expect 
for a nuclear explosion. It's not a super strong earthquake, and it's easy for a nuclear explosion to de to to uh, to look like for for the earthquake detectors. It's easy to look like a earthquake, and especially a low magnitude one. So I will. I don't know if it's true the speculation. But if it is true, it would mean that Iran is developing a nuclear bomb. That's an interesting fact, which would change the balance of power in the Middle East, because we have seen more rockets coming toward Aifa, for example, today. Um, it's still very small attack, very small damage. But a nuclear bomb might be capable of destroying much more things on the Israeli side and creating much more casualties. I don't know if it will happen, and I don't know if this earthquake is a nuclear explosion, but very well could be. Uh, Radar Hits also reported, U.S. government created backdoors at internet service providers to spy on its citizens. China then hacked these backdoors and used them to spy on the U.S. Government systems are always recruited for evil. They have no guards. They are convinced that they are always acting for good, but they implement no guards, and they are not capable, technically, of implementing guards. So whenever you have a government system, whether it's in the computer industry or outside, it will always be used by evil private agents which is why the defense of rights is so important. You can't let your rights be abolishable by the state at any moment because the state is fucking stupid. <clears throat> and they don't, know, they don't know how to tell between I'm being used for good or I'm being used for bad. So every bureaucratic effort at impeding on people's rights must be resisted, and including the right of privacy in computers, because it will be used by private agents. <clears throat> um, we had a discussion with Oaksbusters that made me laugh. We had a, There's a guy who reacted to my tweet about evolution. And one, the comment I said about evolution is this. These randomest genetic drift type of guys I don't know if you are you guys hearing the rain because I'm outside and there's the the beautiful noise of uh, of drops falling on my windows. So uh, are you can you guys uh, give me an emoji? Uh, I don't know. Is there a water emoji? Give me an emoji if you can hear the rain. I'm wondering, but it's a beautiful sight. A dark rain in the night. So going back to what I was talking about, um, <clears throat> we had a discussion about evolution, and my tweet, my tweet was saying, genetic drift and the idea that random is so important, and we have undermined uh, Darwin, and natural selection is not the only mechanism for evolution, has basically never been proven at any believable standard you have these people who have made models oh yeah if you have five individuals in your nation and if an event of random happens that somehow randomly cuts out two of them and keeps in three of them then you can have random effects on evolution but the fact is genetic drift like this appears in models and small samples. But the more you increase the numbers, the more you talk about the billions of individuals that life forms truly have, the more it becomes impossible for random to do anything. So it's still my position, and it's a classical position. And it was beautiful to see Andrew Wilson on the Whatever podcast uh, just delivering, because he doesn't believe in evolution. And yet it was logical enough to say, hey, that doesn't make sense. And there was a black guy on whatever podcast defending the idea of genetic drift. And it didn't make sense instinctually to Andrew Wilson. And he's right. 
we have caught me and Oaks Buster in our current in our Twitter thread. There was a guy coming to make the case for genetic drift. He, he made a very poor case, but as Oaks Buster was laughing his ass up because to make his case, he invokes the idea of founders. Oh, imagine there is a founder effect where a bunch of founders have been migrating and there are just 10 of them. Now you have a small population bottleneck and there's going to be random effects onto it that lead them to have a certain genetic structure. But like you can't invoke the word founder in evolution without invoking a, a deeply non-random and a deeply selected effect. How do you think you become a founder of anything? And here we're talking about founding populations, but how does a bird end up on an island? Well, the bird was a little more exploratory than other birds. There was something wrong with this bird. If the other birds all converge elsewhere, there was something about this bird that led him to land on some island that the other birds didn't land on. You're going to tell me that you, you're sure there's not a single gene that played a role in this? You're sure there wasn't a gene that made that bird a little veer, a little more right, a little less left? Of course, it's ridiculous. I believe that any complex features that we see, including some that may not even have evolutionary advantages today, are the product of cumulative evolutionary strength, evolutionary adaptations from the past. And the genetic driftists have never made their case of isolating their supposed mathematical force. Um, I'm, I'm just currently, I'm just observing the system of twitter space and seeing okay i can see you guys sometimes write stuff on the reply and shema said i don't hear the rain well that's great that means that my little uh, makeshift studio is uh, is here and it's working without uh, the pollution from the water noise Moving on to a couple of small news items I wanted to talk about, and then we will close the show. Uh, the S&P 500 is up 41% since Michael Burry said sell. Remember, on uh, January 31st, Michael Burry, the classic guy who shorts things, who claims that the economy will fall, he had said sell. And I had said on January 31st, 2023, it seems very early to sell. I understand that the economy will fall one day, uh, but Michael Burry is too early all the time. He's been too early even in his big short. So yes, uh, the economy I think will still rise. I think the election result must happen first and there will be some money printing after that and then the economy can crash in two or three years from now, but not now. I don't think it's the right moment. Finally, a big uh, active news item is liberal TikToker Dean Withers, exposed for saying the N-word online, sparking outrage among his community. So Dean Withers is this little soy boy that was debating Nick Ferrantes, uh, you know, this little white liberal guy who is just, it's hilarious just seeing his face. Um, I've seen the debate. It really sucks his performance. It was sad because he's trying to grasp straws against Nick Fuentes. You can see them so excited. These, it's like they're precociously celebrating their debate victory. Oh, oh so you're saying that? Yeah, uh, and Nick Ferrantes, you know, is way too based to fall for this kind of tactic. So if your tactic, and th they've been doing this for years. For years, it's all they had against the right. It, oh, I can't believe I got you to say this. The destiny stuff, the continuous flow of speech, the kind of filibuster of speaking super fast and is delivering in the same way that we saw uh, Destiny perform back in the days. Very bad debater. But the, the big problem also is with Nick Ferrantes, uh, 
is based enough that he will take any bullet. He loves it. So it's like if you get him to say, oh, yeah, I would have Hitler instead of my wife as a president. It's really not hard for, for Nick Fuentes to say this. And that was the miscalculation of Dean Withers. Um, it was a massive miscalculation because Nick Fuentes can just say, yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, these guys are not used to people being able to take the bullet because they're they're debating within a space of social acceptability. And that's why to be a good debater, you kind of have to have abandoned uh, social acceptability. <clears throat> and so now Dean Withers is being exposed. I don't think it's a grave story. He would have used the N-word with an A and then the F-word for gays. Listen, I'm not scandalized by it. It's very hard because trying, yes, I would like this guy to be ridiculed, but at the same time, you can't get the far right and the, the edgy people of the internet to really be scandalized at this. So it's all really, it's like no one is taking issue with the fact that he's used these words, except his leftist fan base. So it's very hard to get a meme going on this. I'm personally not excited at this news. And on top of it, he had already apologized for these things. He had said, oh, I have learned now. He had said exactly what the leftists want you to say, which is, I have learned now. I'm a different man. I'm sorry to the BIPOC community. That's exactly what he wrote. Uh, look, unimportant news on an um, unimportant man. So I'm ready to close the show tonight. Um, if there's anyone who wants to speak, uh, feel free to ask for speakership, and I will uh, promote you to speaker. But I, I have delivered what I had to deliver today. I'll be continuing on this platform for the time being and for an unspecified amount of time. Um, and yeah, that is... Uh, that is what I had to say tonight. So much love to Nat and to the other people who joined as speaker earlier uh, when I did my sound test this afternoon. I see that I see a lot of friends that I would normally see on uh, the regular chat. Uh, DK Shadow. It's good to see all of you here. It's good to see all of you here. So much love to everyone. Uh, everything is fine. and. I'll be continuing the shows on an everyday basis. Bye-bye.